Hello guys, my name is Colin and this is Colin Talks Crypto. The world has just witnessed the launching of the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. In this video, we're going to go over what does that mean, what features are to be rolled out in the coming years. And at the end, I'm going to talk about something that I perceive to be very bullish for Ethereum token holders, something that I don't think many of us have taken into account. Thanks for joining me. All right, guys, it's a very exciting day for Ethereum and Ethereum 2.0. Vitalik himself has just congratulated everyone on a successful launch. And as you can see, here is the Genesis block of Ethereum 2.0. This is block number zero, the Genesis block. And over at launchpad.ethereum.org, it says that it took 524,000 ETH to meet the launch threshold for the Ethereum 2.0 Genesis block and blockchain. Well, we blew past that with 894,000 Ethereum currently that has been staked toward the activation of the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. Now, what does this all mean? It's exciting, we've got Ethereum 2.0 now. What does this mean? And we're gonna go through all the different phases of the future rollouts to the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. And at the end of this, I'm gonna share with you my perspective and my thoughts on how this could affect the token price for Ethereum. So Masari Crypto, shout out to Masari Crypto, did an amazing series of tweets on the subject of Ethereum 2.0, and we're just gonna go through these. And I think that it summarizes the phases that are to come very well. So it says, if Ethereum 2.0 is successful, it will scale Ethereum's throughput by over 1,000 times without sacrificing decentralization. And that's important because we do have many other projects out there, many other high throughput smart contract platforms competing with Ethereum to try to unseat it, to be that number one smart contract platform out there. Off the top of my head, I can name Tron, Tezos, EOS, Cardano, Polkadot, and there's tons more, right? They're all trying to kind of fill that niche. And, and they all say that they're better than Ethereum for this reason and that reason. And they very much are in many cases, but they lack that first mover adoption, that name brand recognition. And as I've come to realize more recently, it's really, really difficult, not impossible, as we've seen with Facebook and MySpace to unseat an incumbent, but very, very difficult. And I think more difficult than many of us would have expected. So this part about without sacrificing decentralization, I think is very key because it's very easy to make a blockchain that outperforms Ethereum if that blockchain is more centralized. It's a trade-off. And really the goal of the best blockchain is to optimize the trade-offs and to pick the best middle ground between decentralization and throughput and performance and features. So Ethereum 2.0 attempts to increase throughput by over 1,000x without sacrificing decentralization. But here's the key, it won't happen overnight. So even though as of today, December 1st, 2020, we just saw the launch of the beacon chain, which I'll get into more in a second, there's a whole lot to go before Ethereum 2.0 is finalized. And so let's just dive into this a bit here. So in summary, Ethereum 2.0 boils down to launching a new blockchain from scratch with a completely new consensus mechanism, proof of stake, and architecture, sharding, all without disrupting Ethereum's existing $100 billion plus crypto economy. The first major phase of Ethereum 2.0 will kick off tomorrow at approximately 12 p.m. UTC, which was about four hours ago, with the launch of phase zero and the beacon chain. Now the beacon chain is Ethereum 2.0's proof of stake blockchain. And when the beacon chain launched, it bootstrapped a network of proof of stake validators but it will have very little functionality. And this is the part I wanna kinda of dive into here. When does this functionality expand? So currently, as it stands today, and for the foreseeable future, for about at least another year, there will be no applications, no transactions, that just means simple value transfer from person A to person B. So you can't make any applications, there'll be no transactions, and there will be no smart contracts executed on the beacon chain for some time. That will all continue on Ethereum's existing proof of work chain for the time being. Now, how long does phase zero last for? 
Once phase zero has been completed and Ethereum 2.0's validator set is firmly in place, phase one will implement new architecture for how the beacon chain stores data called sharding. Sharding will subdivide the beacon chain into 64 parallel shards, and that will become phase one. But even when sharding is implemented, possibly around this same time next year, the entire Ethereum ecosystem will continue to run in parallel on the proof-of-work chain. Now, I argue that that's a bit early to say this time next year, and we'll get into why I say that later here. Now, phase 1.5, this is right after phase 1, it's called the merge. And basically, once Ethereum's beacon chain has a full set of proof-of-stake validators securing the network, and the chain has been subdivided into 64 parallel shards, then it will be time to merge Ethereum as we know it today into Ethereum 2.0. So notice that it's not until really phase 1.5 that we actually get a fully functional Ethereum 2.0 blockchain where you can transact on it. So that's over a year away from now. This will be accomplished by merging of all the smart contracts and transaction data from the proof of work chain into a single shard under the beacon chain. At this point, Ethereum will have successfully transitioned from proof of work to proof of stake. However, and this is the key point here, guys. This will not take place until sometime in 2022. So the earliest point in which the average Ethereum user today interacts with Ethereum 2.0 is at least one year away. And I would argue actually more like a year and a half minimum away. Phase two, and it says that may never happen. And he explains why here. This is interesting. The final phase of Ethereum 2.0 involves unlocking smart contract execution across some or all of the beacon chain's 64 shards. Additionally, phase two may introduce a new virtual machine. However, this phase may end up being unnecessary with phases zero through 1.5 and the adoption of a layer two scaling technique called rollups. Rollups are a type of layer two scaling technology that process transactions independently of the Ethereum blockchain, but settle snapshots of their state to the main chain. Rollups plus phase 1.5 would amount to an approximate 10,000 X improvement in network processing capacity over the current state of Ethereum. This means that if current layer one protocols embrace rollups, Ethereum 2.0, as it's currently laid out, may never fully launch, but Ethereum will reach its desired scalability within the next two years. So I find that really interesting that we may not even need to take Ethereum all the way to its full final phase to get the full scaling benefits and to really realize the vision that Ethereum 2.0 has set upon itself. So guys, that's basically how it's gonna go down. It's not until like 2022 that we're gonna have a fully functional Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. And that brings me to my final point here. And I haven't heard anyone else talking about this. And this is just, I kind of put this together this morning. So right now it's December 1st. We have like two years or a year and a half until we get the full functionality of the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. So what happens in the meantime? Basically we have Ethereum being locked up as validators come online upholding the beacon chain for Ethereum 2.0. And that's all fine and good, but they can't transact and you can't even take tokens out of the beacon chain. So what's happening is there's an ever increasing number of tokens that are getting locked up. And as of this moment, there's about 900,000 ETH that are staked and these stakers and validators are getting rewarded. And so there's also an incentive for this number to keep increasing. The fewer validators and the fewer ETH staked the higher percentage reward each of these validators gets. So there's gonna be a sweet spot where eventually validators determine that the reward isn't worth putting more validators online. But until that point, and I would argue that's a long ways away, that's a lot of ETH away from now, people will be flocking toward validating Ethereum 2.0 nodes. So what effect does this have? Now let's just put this in perspective with the bull run, okay guys? So as I've been saying for a long time now, we have about a year until the bull run finally peaks out. I think somewhere between mid and late 2021, we're going to see a Bitcoin bull run price peak at anywhere from 200,000 to 300,000, easily over 100,000. That's the safe bet in my opinion. And this is not financial advice. So if Ethereum 2.0's beacon chain lasts all the way till 2022 before any real functionality gets put in place and an increasing amount of Ethereum tokens are getting locked up in the Ethereum 2.0 chain, what does that mean? Well, that means that Ethereum 2.0, you can almost pretend like it doesn't exist 
for the purposes of this bull run. And the one thing that is tangible that does exist is a reduction in supply, an effective reduction in supply for the Ethereum 1 chain. And so this Ethereum right here, this 894,000 Ethereum is out of commission on the Ethereum 1.0 chain. That's an effective supply reduction. And with a bull run that is fast upon us and increasing month by month here, we're right in the heart of a bull run, and we have what I expect to be a massive continuing supply reduction for Ethereum, and tons of new interest entering the scene as investors want to jump on board, we have these two forces that are working opposite. We have supply reduction and we have interest and demand increasing. So we all know what happens. It's a simple formula. When you have increasing demand and reduced supply, you have an increasing price. So I think that actually, ironically, for this bull run, the greatest thing isn't ETH2, it's the effect of the staked ETH going to ETH2 and knowing that there's a future in place for Ethereum 1.0 on that future shard. But the real tangible benefits to us as Ethereum 1.0 investors and token holders, in my opinion, is the reduced supply. So this is really exciting to me. This is something that Bitcoin doesn't have or any of these other blockchains don't have. They don't have this massive reduction to supply taking place because they're not transitioning to a, a version 2.0 of their blockchain blockchain. But Ethereum 1.0 right now, all you guys holding ETH tokens are going to see the benefit of this, I think. And so in my opinion, I don't think that it's smart. I probably shouldn't be saying this because then everyone's going to stop sending tokens over to the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain and locking them up. But as an ETH token holder, I want people to lock up their tokens on the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. And you guys should want that too. So I personally speaking, am not going to be sending any of my ETH1 tokens over to the ETH2 blockchain and locking them up for a couple reasons. First of which is because I can't transfer them back. And during a bull run, and take note of this guys, if you wanna take profits, you're not gonna be able to with any tokens that you've sent over to the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. Those tokens are locked up probably until 2022. So if you were to hypothetically send your entire Ethereum 1.0 stash over to the beacon chain, you would be not able to sell any of those tokens during the price run up for the bull run coming up. And that's really thinking ahead, but I think that's really important right now because if you did that and you sent your full stash of ETH tokens over to the ETH2 blockchain, and then you see an ETH price of like $5,000 per token, you can't do anything. Unless some exchanges let you have like a placeholder for your tokens that you um, migrated to the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. Maybe Coinbase or these other exchanges will allow something like that and then you can still trade them. And in that case, maybe that changes things up a little bit. But I'm just going to be very wary about locking up my tokens at this stage of the game. You know, we've been waiting for four or five years now. There's no reason to jump the gun or to be rash or jump to anything quickly. Um, I understand that there are staking rewards in place for those who do want to lock up their tokens on the Ethereum. 2.0 blockchain and if that's something that you want to do you know my hats off to you go for it I won't be doing the same thing myself um, you may get a huge reward and that's awesome but to me that huge reward isn't worth the inaccessibility and the illiquidity of my ETH tokens being locked up on the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. So just some food for thought, guys. I think that the hidden side effect of this Ethereum 2.0 launch is not Ethereum 2.0 at all, which is still great and amazing, and I, I love it, but it's actually the price effects of the reduced supply while there's an increasing demand for Ethereum 1.0. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please smash that like button, please share, please subscribe, and I'll talk to you again soon. Oh,